We got the lights, crispy looking shop. We got it all. Only, only one thing is missing, the actual painting, which is kind of a, the most important thing of them all, but it is now happily displayed in its new home. Actually, funny story about this painting, I had to ship it a few days ago, and not just ship it, ship it, I had to take a train, travel for three hours, and then in five minutes to manage to hand deliver it and take a ticket back home. Which was an extreme experience, but that's what you gotta do when the painting's for a birthday and you missed the post office the previous day, but I have recorded it all and since you have always been commenting and asking about how I make certain waves and quotes, I decided to make a good old tutorial and to share with you 7 tips that will make it just so much easier for you when you go into making a nice and tasty ocean sunset. So brace yourself and let's get into it. Alright, first thing first, it, it might seem kinda obvious, but it's really important. Use references. And I'm not saying just use a reference for the painting that you're gonna make and copy something from the internet. Look into different quotes, different waves, go into Pinterest, go into Instagram. We all know, we all spend so much time on Instagram, so why not make it useful? Or just go outside and observe the sunset, the sunrise, the waves. For this landscape, I have used more than 10 different references in order to imagine how I want everything to look. You gotta build up that imagery and base of references and knowledge of how things work and look in order to be able to step on it and create, observe and then create. And that is probably the most important tip of them all. If you take only that, you're set, you're done, you're ready. Just go and create. Yeah, that's it. One tip how to create the perfect ocean, sunset, any painting. There is nothing worse than seeing a nice executed painting and just a messed up sea level. So make sure to start with your horizontals, make this nice sea level even and frame it and scale your painting properly. That's, that's utterly important. And usually I make under paintings, but for this one I really didn't have the time, so I made only sketch on a small paper. But I would really recommend before starting a painting, and especially a bigger one, tone the canvas and make that under sketch. You can make the perfect composition, scale the painting perfectly, make that nice depth of field. But if you don't use the colors that are working together nice, you're doomed, my friend. And I know I tend to use a lot of colors in my paintings, but I always concentrate on two main colors. In this case, for the sunset, I'm using a lot of orange and yellows, and the complementary color of that is blue and teals. So if you stay somewhere in that lane, it will all work perfect for you. But I would really suggest study the color wheel and see which colors are complementary. Also one thing that's gonna help you, references. Just observe and you will see which colors are meant for each other. In this one, I'm so guilty and I admit it. Don't rush into details, just lay off your main colors. First lay down the color of the sky, the color of the sea, then after that you can start making the shadows and the main highlights of the clouds and that's it, don't rush into details. And if you make the sky first, it's so much easier not to work against white canvas. If you tone the canvas beforehand and make the underpainting, that would be a big relief for you. Yeah, maybe that should be inserted as a tip. Make the underpainting and tone the canvas. And then paint the main colors and don't lose yourself in the details. Getting in it. Tip number five separate and create depth. And what I mean by that is separate and create depth. Find how to separate the foreground from the background, the underwater from the sea level, the sea level from the sky and clouds. And that would really create the depth of field for a natural painting. So you have all these reflections on the sea surface, but as they are getting more far in the distance, they are losing their vibrance, they are getting more unsaturated. And so that means in the very background where the sky touches the ocean, you see just a really dumb and unsaturated color as a 
reflection of the sky. The same way it works under the water, into the very depth of the ocean, you see just one color smudged around, but in that wave where it's touching the very front of the painting, you see many colors, and so that just divides perfectly the depth of the ocean and that very frontal wave that we see. And speaking about water, let's flow into the next tip. Not pun intended. Basically all that we see is because of the light that is reflecting off of it. And when this light is going through different environment, different spaces, it changes. In the same way when the light has to go through the water, we see it different. When some of the waves over the surface rise and they get thinner, more light is coming through them and that means that a different color will be seen. So make sure to notice that in your painting and represent it. And exactly the same thing is happening underwater. As the light is going through the water, it changes the whole scenery. Basically, it's all about physics and understanding them. So, study folks, says the guy who haven't stepped in school the final year of high school. And finally, the one tip we've all been waiting for, and it is to go full beast mode into the details. In the end, it's all about details and most of the time they won't be seen but if they miss now that's a totally different story and completely different picture and painting so just step back observe your painting and see where you can put a little bit of extra work a little bit of extra brushes in order to make this piece more touching more natural more realistic and just admit it we as an artist we we love details and sometimes more than usually we go overboard with that, so it's a good thing to find a reasonable amount, but after all, it is And as anything in life, I completely stand behind that statement, the details make it matter. Alright folks, that's it. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you have took something useful, something that you can apply in your workflow, in your process and go out there and create these nice and tasty seascapes and sunsets and oceans and waves and just go out there and have fun. As you know me, for most of my works I make prints, so if you want to support me and this channel and what I'm doing here, you can check out my art store and for any other prints and artworks, if you check out my Patreon page, I will have the full process of this video uploaded there, not narrated. And as always, thank you so much for watching and for being here and supporting this channel. It is really, really appreciated. And I will see you in the next video. Is that recording? I can see nothing without glasses. But someone told me that I look nice with them on my hair, so...